today is the first day of the GMP series and I am so glad that you can join us for this session and um, really get started as far as um, or, or perhaps continue your journey um, with good manufacturing practices. Basically for the next 10 days we are going to be covering a different topic each day about good manufacturing practices so that you can start to implement these things in the way that you run your herbal business. So this is such an important topic because a lot of people get into herbal business uh, out of the passion and um, really just wanting to create wonderful herbal products and getting them out into the world. But the problem is that often we are driven by our passion and um, behind the scenes isn't always so clear and uh, exactly as good as it could be and that is it's so 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 important not only for yourself as the the business owner to protect yourself but also for your uh, clients and just to to make sure that you are uh, kind of giving people the best product you possibly can so this is really really important and throughout this 10-day series this is uh, designed to be as actionable as possible so that we can really go from overwhelm to um, getting things done and actually in writing. Um, and we're going to be going through it together in the 10 days. So what I wanted to do is I'm going to start by sharing my screen a little bit. So this is the GMP series. And like I said, today is day one of the series, the very first day. And this is an overview of kind of what we're going to cover going forward. And so this uh, whole series is really designed around creating written records for your current good manufacturing practices for your herbal business. So the first question that probably we do need to cover getting into this is what are GMPs? So um, first of all, if you already uh, do kind of know what GMPs are or you have an idea, like please feel free to write that in the chat. Basically, uh, good manufacturing practices or current good manufacturing practices is what um, the FDA calls them is the are the regulations enforced by the um, yeah by the FDA so that um, it's, it's basically around ensuring safety of consumers when they take your product so there are specific kind of rules around what you can do and what you can't do uh, when you manufacture products and this is, this is kind of what they are. And these specific rules, what we're going to be covering in the GMP series, are specifically around what the FDA um, requires. And so this is based for people uh, in the United States. So it's like specifically for you guys. But um, as most of you do know, I'm not actually based in the US myself. I am um, in Italy and um, the regulations are slightly different around the world. In Italy, it's a little bit different from Australia where I grew up. It's a little bit different. But what I want to say is that like what we're focusing on is specifically for the FDA uh, in US based, but it is applicable in other areas. So like a lot of the principles are quite similar and you will still be able to use the templates that we're going through um, no matter where you are in the world. And you'll just have to tweak it based on your own, um, your own area and what you need to do. On that note, I really do want to um, uh, have a, like a strong disclaimer here that, um, so this series is kind of uh, making a little bit clearer what the FDA says, but it's not necessarily, like it's definitely just informational purposes and the onus is completely on you as far as doing your own research and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm trying to help uh, understand the information, but it's definitely up to you to do your own research. And so when like, yeah, why are GMPs so important? Like uh, GMPs basically provide the systems that assure proper design, monitoring, control, and manufacturing processes and facilities. And so this is so, so, so important because it like directly affects the quality of your products. So like, it's not just about um, like following rules. It's really about doing things in the best way that you can so that um, 
you're delivering the best products. Like it is so, so, so important. And that is why we're going to be doing this because we're going to um, work out how to do it. So it's things like cleaning checklists, like going through the same process so that you can do it. And like recipes, how do you make your herbal products? All of this, we're, we're really going to get into it. So I've got a question for you at this point is like, how confident do you feel about the records that you keep right now? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And I really would like to see in the chat, um, do you currently have um, some system of uh, good manufacturing processes? I do hope you have something, maybe you have like a, a binder of recipes or something like that. Like what do people have? I would love to know kind of where you're currently at so that we can um, work from there. And this is gonna help me for going forward as well. Okay, so Laura's saying, I used the forms last year, but terrible at keeping them straight. Okay, so this is a really good point in terms of um, the, like actually implementing stuff and getting it, getting it happening. It's um, really, really important to do so. I know that good manufacturing practices are a huge um, sticking point for a lot of herbalists. And this is definitely true. Um, I've seen in the herbal circle, we have, um, this is my monthly membership of herbal business owners. We talk about um, a lot of topics, but just getting understanding how to manufacture products in a safe way is a um, overwhelming topic. And um, it's, it's just definitely so important. But my goal with this series is to kind of transform this, like I have no idea what I'm doing kind of feeling to like, yes, you can do it. And that's, this is what I want people to feel at the end of the series, just like you're kind of in control and you know what you're doing and that you are kind of on the right track. Especially because I do know that um, quite a few people have um, started their business and just kind of gone all in and they get a little bit confused along the way and just kind of, um, putting things out there, but without truly a process in place. So this is what we're on right now is the um, orientation session. This here is really what we're going through in this series. So this is part 111 of the FDA guidelines, which is the current good manufacturing practice in manufacturing, packaging, labeling, and holding operations for dietary supplements. So this is what the, the true focus of um, this session is. And um, if you have a look at this, it is a humongous document. It goes like really, really um, into detail as to exactly what you're good, what you're supposed to do. And so each of these topics we are going to be going into more detail on throughout the series. This is what we're going to be starting is the cleaning and sanitation. And we're going over the requirements for the place where you manufacture your herbal products and also about the physical plant, the grounds, the equipment, the utensils that you use and all of that sort of thing. Then on Wednesday, we're going to be uh, talking about the production process and control system. So this is like exactly kind of how all of the pieces come together. Then on Thursday, this is like one of the most important core pieces is the manufacturing and batch records. So these are essentially your recipes for um, making your herbal products, but it's around like working out exactly the weights that you put in, the time and the steps and how you make your products and making it into a proper process so that you could theoretically give that process to someone else and they could make your product in exactly the same way. And this is absolutely key for a sustainable business because as you grow your herbal business, you'll start to realize that it's not actually feasible for you to be doing everything. But if you have clear processes in place, first of all, you will always um, get consistent results in the way that you, um, in how your products turn out but also someone else can do it and you can uh, continue on that visioning role, maybe formulating more products or different ideas, that sort of thing. And uh, team members can follow the process that you've created and kind of do what you've done, uh, make those same products and then it, it helps to grow your business. So this is a key part. Then on Friday, we've got the laboratory and manufacturing operations. So this is like exactly 
kind of how things happen in when you're manufacturing. Uh, on Saturday, we're talking about packaging and labeling and holding and distributing. So this is how you should be actually keeping your products. And this is really important as far as like the room where you keep things and uh, if you keep, um, you know, labeled bottles together and unlabeled things in a different area and being able to um, make sure things don't get accidentally mixed up and being really clear about how things are um, stored. Also the actual storage recruitment conditions and we'll be going into the details as far as what you need to think about for each of these on the actual days then on sunday we're going to talk about returns and complaints so how to um, uh, manage that and then we're going to be talking about personnel as well so this is yet yeah, your team and how to um how to expand upon that and then towards the end of the series we're looking at the actual records and that you need to keep and how to keep them the, in this day and age, it is actually possible to keep um, electronic records, but you do need to consider the security of that sort of thing as well. So we'll talk about that and your next steps. As we go through each of these days, I did mention in the emails that there are some prizes up for grabs and there truly are. So um, as you might have remembered in the Herbal Entrepreneur Conference that we did some like hashtag sharing and then through that we were able to um, give out some prizes and I thought it would be fun to do the same thing this time. And so um, what I would like it you to do is throughout this, um, yeah, this series, please share um, with the hashtag, hashtag the GMP series. I'll put this up on the screen so you can see it. If you share with the hashtag GMP series, the GMP series. So you can share a picture of what you're learning. Maybe you might share a, um, the notebook that you put together, the, um, a binder of all of your processes, anything that you would like to share, please share with the GMP series. And basically you can um, win, you have a chance to win the GMP pack for free. So keep on sharing throughout the, the whole series and we'll be picking winners on the final day. Um, if you do already have already upgraded to the GMP pack, you will have the option to either um, get a refund for your GMP pack or to um, join us in the Hebel Circle for several months. So you can decide um, which option you'd like to go with. But there will be, a, I haven't decided exactly how many win, winners, but there will be more than one. So um, really do uh, share on the GMP series. And this can be on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, just yeah, share whatever you would like. And it can, it can be in stories or in um, your posts. And do also tag me at Herbal Entrepreneur as well, so that I, um, I see it for sure. I'll be checking the hashtag anyway, but tagging me is great. And just to let you know kind of what the, the GMP pack is, um, this is the GMP pack. Basically, um, these recordings, uh, you will get lifetime access to all of the recordings, uh, which is really actionable stuff as far as we're going to go through exactly what are in the templates, what you need to do, and what you need to include and what you need to re record. And you will get these templates here, and there's checklists and logs and things like that. And these are all um, downloadable either as a PDF or as a PDF isn't that useful though because of it has um, parts where you have to customize it for your business. So the, what you really do is you get the editable version and you can put your own business logo on there and then fill in your own um, requirements for your business and then kind of make it your own. So it's templates to get you started so that it's just like fill in the blank and make it happen. And so this is, um, yeah, this is the GMP pack uh, that is the upgrade from the GMP series. So the GMP series, like I, I said, we are going to be going through each of those templates live here on the series each day. And so it's, um, it's really free. <laughs> you, you, can, you can join us and you can make your own templates as you go watching these videos and you will be able to to implement everything. The um, upgrade into the GMP pack, will you'll get a link to join us on Zoom so that you can also um, uh, join those group discussions and you'll have lifetime access to the videos so that you can um, 
do it whenever you want to. <laughs> and for those of you who have been around for a while, um, in the very first Herbal Entrepreneur Conference, I think, yeah, it was the first Herbal Entrepreneur Conference, um, we had uh, Guido Masset uh, coming on to talk about good manufacturing practices. And I thought it would be fun to share his video with you today because he gave us such a great overview to kind of um, get started and simplify down what good manufacturing practices are all about. So I am going to share this. So in terms of FDA compliance, I think um, if you really want an overview, it's relatively simple. Um, raw material, what is it? Is it pure? Is it safe? Is it the right thing? Final product, does it have everything that you think it's supposed to have in it? And how can you show that that is the case? And then the steps to get from raw to final. Are you tracking them? What are those steps? Who's checking to make sure those steps happened? How do you minimize human error there? And I think if you think of it that way, you know, you've got the bookends of the raw material and the final products, and then you've got this manufacturing process that sits between them, right? That needs to be somewhat standardized so that you can do it the same every time to ensure product consistency. Then you've really gotten at the heart of what FDA is trying to get at, at least in the United States, in terms of its good manufacturing practices. Okay, so I hope that makes a little bit of sense as far as Guido was talking about the, how it's really outlining that process of like what you're using and how it becomes the final product. So when it comes to our herbal products, it's like if we take a, a simple elderberry syrup as an example, um, like you've got the elderberries, what type of elderberries are they? Um, where did you get them from? Are you sure that they're elderberries? Like, so if you, grow them yourself, you need to have some sort of like checklist in place of how to identify that it is elderberry. Maybe it's that you bought the plant and you've got the, the tag or whatever it is. Or did you um, uh, buy that elderberry from a supplier? And then you would want things like the COA, the, um, the certificate of analysis, so that you understand kind of about that, what you're using. And then it's, really about putting that process together. Like what are the steps that you do? Do you um, like, as far as like your exact recipe of how you make that elderberry syrup and what you do in each order. And this goes right from taking those elderberries and making it into the syrup, but then also putting it into the bottle, putting the lid on and sticking the label on and even packing and like actually getting it into the store as well. So that whole process is encompassed inside um, what we're going to be covering in this series. This series is also focused on dietary supplements of um, what the FDA categorizes dietary supplements. So this is um, things like teas and tinctures. It includes things that are edible. Um, but the, the general principles are pretty widespread across um, the herbal products that people are creating. Now, that is basically it for now. Um, the, I did also think, um, I want to give you a bit of a, like an, a taster as far as what we're going to be seeing over the next 10 days and what sort of things you get access to. This is the, yeah, what the GMP pack looks like. It's pretty similar to the Herbal Entrepreneur Conference if you have already um, seen that. We've got like an introduction, but like in particular, we've got an FDA guideline summary. And so this is like a downloadable PDF that is very similar to um, the actual FDA guidelines that are outlined here, but it's in slightly more digestible words, I guess. So basically I, um, and yeah, I did this. I went through and um, went through the whole, whole, all of the guidelines and started to put it into a little bit more user-friendly terminology so that it's easier to read. So this is like the overview. It's still quite long. It's like 27 pages, but it's um, the overview of what you need to do of what the FDA outlined. So this is like the first starting place as far as like what you want to, um, what you need to do. And it's really clear as well. If you, if you look here at the website, it's really clear about what you need to um, do. So like 
the records that you need to keep for each section. So, um, and we'll be going into the exact specifics each day. So today I'm really just giving you this overview of what's going on, what to expect, what you can do, but you will see each day we're going to go like right into the details of like what you need to do for that specific area. So like, um, yeah, the procedures for the responsibilities of con quality control operations and like exactly um, what you need to do. So material reviews and how to reject products if they're not up to the standard and things like that. So that is uh, one part inside here. And then we've also got all of the templates. Yeah, we've got all of these different templates here. And so you can basically see that they, so the master manufacturing record, this is an example. Um, we've got, this is like your recipe. And so this is where you can add in your stuff for your business and then what sort of product you've got and the, yeah, basically what, what your recipe is. So if you, like, if you really think about this as far as a recipe, it is like your ingredients here, then um, like how many servings it's going to take and um, then the process or the, yeah, in the recipe, the method. And, oh, that's a, and then here we've also got like the, the ingredients or, or like the equipment that you need and then the packaging procedure is slightly different to the actual making procedure and then specifications as to how it looks like and things like that as well but we will get into all of these so here's just one example of the um the templates and you can download them from um uh, a editable copy of this inside the gmp pack but uh, these are all the different templates that we've got and it's all like there for you to use. But um, that's, how, well, that's kind of the, the sneak peek into what the GMP pack is. But the, like I said, the GMP series, I will be sharing my screen. You can see the, the recipes and things like that as we go through. And so if, you're, um, yeah, if your budget is inhibiting you from upgrading to the GMP pack, you will be able to like check what we're doing and write down and kind of make your own checklist and things like that as you go. Obviously it's great if you do upgrade, but um, I'm just really, really wanting to share this information with you. And I'm so glad that you can be here to, to share it with me. Here we are. I'm just gonna check in on the comments before we wrap up for today. If you have any specific questions, feel free to um, write in the, either in the comments of this video, or you can also email me at support at herbalentrepreneur.com and we will um, uh, try to address that in the rest of this series. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions as far as I've been confused about some of the laboratory requirements like microbiological activity testing. And um, that is a, a, um, a tough question. This is, we're gonna get into the specifics of this uh, throughout the series, but it is tricky because um, the requirements are quite difficult as far as the lab requirements and you do often need to send stuff away for each batch you create. And so there's where you start to need to be a little bit business savvy as starters, uh, as far as starting to create bigger batches rather than tiny little batches. So that the testing that you do um, is kind of worth it for each batch and things like that. So you'll start to see it's really, really important to um, increase your batch size. Otherwise your profitability is a little bit harder to um, match up because of that. All right, yes. Okay, I, this is such a relatable comment. So Robert is saying, I started on that FDA uh, GMP making SEOPs, but got confused as to what I actually needed written down and um, was copying it out of the regulations, but just got bored and moved on to something else. And that is like, yes, <laughs> I completely understand that because it is boring. And um, that is kind of... Um, one of the hardest things about this, but hopefully this series is going to make it more fun and um, we can go through and make the processes together. And like, really, this isn't going to be something that you just one and done. It's going to be something that you continually work on and improve, but getting something in writing is so, so, so important because really at any moment you could be asked like, 
what, where are your regulations? What are you doing? You could have an inquiry into your business. And just like having something on hand is important just to show like, yes, I'm at this point and this is what I've done. And at least having something to show that you've made an effort is um, like, first of all, you need to do that. And then we are going to continue to, um, to make it as, as good as we possibly can. I know that a lot of people in this audience are smaller business owners and a lot of these things are like they truly are difficult to do as a small business and um but you, you need to work with the regulations because the regulations are not there to inhibit us they're not there to make it um yeah the, they really are there for the safety of the consumer and that should be our priority too because we we want the best for our customers and clients of course and um following and making good manufacturing practices um, are important to for that quality of the products and making sure that it's consistent and that you're actually giving them the product that you say that you are giving them like can you imagine if you kept all of your herbal products in a dusty cupboard somewhere and then the you forgot to put a label on and they got mixed up and you accidentally put the wrong label and the wrong product and then you gave something to someone and they had an allergic reaction for example or like or if there was um a bacterial contamination of one of your products or mold or something like that because you didn't kind of do things properly. Like just the, the negative outcomes that could happen uh, are real. And so you really need to do everything in your power to um, minimize that risk and be giving the best quality products to your customers that you can. And that is what this whole series is about. So I hope that you're going to stick with me for these 10 days because that is what we're gonna be doing. Now I have a question. What if you don't have a herbal business yet and no template to fill out? All right, that's a great question. If you don't have a herbal business yet, I would like to ask you, have you ever made a herbal product? If you have made a herbal product, so this might be you've formulated your own tea, you've made a herbal tincture, you've made a decoction, you have um, made a salve or a cream or like, if you've made any herbal product, I would like to encourage you to try to at least get started with um, uh, manufacturing batch records. So um, this is like your recipes, but really making it clear and writing down what you're doing. And this is like, even if you don't have an established business yet, this is really important for your own personal knowledge as well. So for example, um, if you are her infusing herbs in oils, for example, uh, there are like different ratios of the weights that you might be using or different types of oils. And um, if you keep good records as to what you're doing, then you can actually go back and remember what you did um, to see what is what gives you the best results and then improve your products going forward. So um, to give you like some real examples, just in case maybe it it's easier for you to understand in the in the kitchen. It's always nice to relate it back to the kitchen because it's so, so easy to understand, I think. But like if you've done canning before, there's often different recipes that you can do as far as like what you add. Personally, I like to make um, pomerola, so the Italian tomato sauce. And um, it's pretty different depending on like um, what you put inside. So sometimes I just put whatever I have inside, but um, I make a record like and it's I actually put like my own version of um, batch numbers on the Pomerola that I make uh, so that I can remember what I put in that one like sometimes I put onion sometimes I put like onion celery basil and oregano and sometimes I put <laughs> less of those things because I don't have them on hand but I kind of write what which batch it is on the uh, on the label because then later on when I go to get it out of the cupboard I know which ones taste best because I put notes on later and um, then I also improve for the next year I can kind of put the best things inside my pomerola as well when I'm making that sauce and as far as like cooking times and you start to 
see, does, does it make a difference cooking for longer? Does it make it taste better? And you can do it and then see the results. And this is the same with herbal products as far as like how long it infuses for. Um, you might do experiments and start to see the difference. So if you create herbal products, I would recommend starting with these um, uh, these records, but also the, the cleaning checklists and things like that are so important. Like we don't want mold in our products. So follow, follow the processes. Often you might just do them without having a written record, but it's a good idea to do it. And it like makes it a real professional kind of herbal practice. So, so let's do it. What if you only sell to your own clients? Do you need to do all this? Okay, yeah. So do you only sell products to your own clients? Do you need to do this? Basically, yes. <laughs> like the, um, the, in that case, it may not be that the FDA is coming to check out your business or whatever, but like, I really encourage you to think about like, what is best for your clients? Like you want them to have complete trust in you as an herbalist and the way that you practice. And if you are working out of a, like a dusty room with animals going through and you um, don't sanitize your equipment and sometimes things get moldy like are you really giving them the best experience so like it's really really important to think about those things that um, make your products better and then um, doing it and so also like the having a checklist just helps to make sure that you do everything um, as far as cleaning and things like that go just to keep you on your toes because it's so easy to forget stuff as humans like our brains are designed to to think and create but um, yeah really just following processes often doesn't come naturally to people who are creative and enjoy making herbal products and so that's definitely me I know I forget to do things all the time and so um, having a checklist really does help and so in that way, I would really, uh, yeah, I, I think, yes, <laughs> even if you're not like a, an established business yet, like start to do this. And it is boring to set up the written um, procedures, but it's so important. Like it, it, it's for a reason. It's for the quality of your products. And if this is important for you, if you do want to actually do your best work as an herbalist, then yeah, you should set aside a couple of hours to write out those procedures and just get it in writing what you're doing. It is really, really important. And I think we, we owe it to our clients. So yes, do it. <laughs> That's what I think. The, all right. So I think um, basically this is the, um, this is the welcome to the series. And I hope it's kind of cleared up a little bit how it's going to work. So just to recap again, we've got the, so this is the first day of 10, we've got nine more days. And on each of the days, we're gonna be focusing on a different topic out of that like chapter 111 of the FDA guidelines. And then we will have around about like yeah, 30, 40 minutes of like focus on the content. So that's basically how it works for the, yeah, how it all works. You will also be able to join the live sessions and actually like get the most out of it. I think this is one of the best parts about this series as well is actually we do it together and set the time. We prioritize this time each day to, to do it. That helps to um, get it finished because often this is something that we procrastinate on because it's not the most fun thing to do. But if you prioritize this time now, you can kind of get at least those like initial documents in your binder with what you do for your business. And then, um, yeah, we can work from there. So once again, if you have any questions, please do let me know. You can send me an email or um, yeah, also comment on this video. And I did want to mention, seeing as we are on YouTube, we are like, are from once this series wraps up, I am going to be um, building this YouTube channel. So if you are watching, I would really like it if you could like um, hit subscribe on Herbal Entrepreneur so that we can um, grow this channel as well. And I'm, yeah, like my plan is to go and release a video every week after this series. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit like as well on this video. We might as well while it's live. This video, yeah, won't be alive forever because we are going to um, uh, 
wrap up the GMP series um, and it will be for the GMP pack going forward. But yeah, for now, you do that. But subscribe is the most important thing. Um, will the packs have continuous updates as well? Yes, they will. So like I said, this pack has actually been available for two years. Every now and again, I get an email from someone saying, hey, I actually need a template for this as well. Would you be able to include it in the temp in the GMP pack? And like the answer is yes. <laughs> like the, um, I'm absolutely uh, willing to add more things or whatever based on what people need. So yes, they will be updated. And like, basically it's a once off fee that you get lifetime access to the whole GMP pack, including any updates into the future as well. So yes, <laughs> that's yeah. Um, and we've also got Mindy, really appreciate your attitude towards this, uh, that it's about protecting our clients and customers, Yolanda, thanks. Yeah, and it's true, like that is really why I'm doing it and why this is free, because it is so, like it just is so important that we respect what our work and that we do the best that we can, which is what the GMP series is all about and yeah, why it's, it's free to, to learn from this session.